Quilt Conversations Live is now streaming twice a week. Yes, we are streaming on Wednesdays on Amazon Live. You heard right, Amazon Live. Here's a sneak peek at one of those episodes. In this one, I talk about fabric painting, how I selected fabric for a new tote bag with some ombre fabric. We also look at how I quilted the tote with acrylic rulers, a beautiful Baptist fan pattern, and so much more. And I'm excited tonight because I'm going to share some fun DIY craft projects and some amazing DIY books. Great holiday gift ideas. This is going to be an interesting, interesting night. Say hello, unmute. Join us for a lively conversation about fabric, about printers, about um, how to use color. We're going to talk about a lot of different things when it comes to crafting. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter, and this is Quilt Conversations Live here on Amazon Live. Thanks for being here. Unmute and join me. Okay, what is the first thing we're going to talk about? Have you heard of something called transfer artist paper? I just highlighted that in the carousel. It's relatively new to me. I did test it out. And by the way, some of the books and products that I'm going to share with you tonight were sent to me by the publisher with no obligation. So all the opinions and the things that I've done with these products are my own. My own opinion, my own experiences. Also, I have purchased some of these items myself. Some were given by the publisher and some were purchased by me personally. Okay, so the first thing is this artist paper. It's called Transfer Artist Paper. It's an iron-on transfer sheet that you use with an inkjet printer. So just think about it. Anything that you can send through your printer, you can print on this transfer paper and then put it on fabric, glass, metal, all kinds of things. It says printer friendly, transfer an image with a hot iron to any surface and it comes out either shiny or matte finish. Are you intrigued? I could not wait to try it. Let's get a closer look from the overhead camera. So here it is on the overhead camera. Printer friendly, transfer the image with a hot iron. You can use canvas fabric as they did here or any other type of surface. I did my first test on glass. I'm going to show that to you. You use an inkjet printer. Now the printer that I used, I'll highlight in the carousel, it's the Epson Workforce printer. I love that printer. It's a large format printer. It's very versatile. I scan with it. I print with it. I use it every day. I use it for all kinds of things. I love this printer. So that's the printer that I used for it. Let me show you what I did. Now, I'm always thinking about how I can use different crafting products for my business. So the first thing I did, I'm showing you now. I took my logo, my Living Water Quilter logo, and I printed it various sizes with different color backgrounds. And I thought, wow, that is pretty interesting. Now, notice that my business name is backwards. Remember, when you're going to use words, it must be reverse, reverse printing. Because remember, we're going to turn this around and iron it onto the fabric. Now it's going to read correctly because I reverse printed. Now, 
what did I put it on? I told you that I put it on glass. You want to see? Here it is. Here it is. I put my logo on glass. Now, here's the interesting thing. When I first printed the transfer artist paper through my workforce printer, which I mentioned, it's in the carousel, it's highlighted, I forgot to reverse the words. So I had a whole sheet basically with words on it that I had to cut out because once you turn it around to iron it, all the wording was the wrong way, right? So I thought, well, what can I do? Can I salvage this? So with this glass piece, I didn't put it on top and iron it. I asked because glass is see-through, right? It's see-through. I put it on the back and put it this way. So now when you turn it over, it's reading the correct way. So this was my first test with the artist craft paper because it says you can put it on anything. So I'm gonna highlight that again in the carousel. It's called the transfer artist paper. Now you're probably wondering, can you put it on t-shirts? Yes, because you can use fabric. You can put it on anything, any object. It says, well, almost any surface. Let's see what it says in the back here. Transfer your imagination into art. Inkjet printer, paint, stamp, or draw images onto the tap. It's called tap. Transfer artist paper or tap. So you can use your inkjet printer or you can paint on it. You can stamp on it. You can draw on it and then transfer it using a hot iron. Iron on onto almost any surface. Transfer images are crisp and color fast. That means that when I finally transfer this to some fabric, it's going to be color fast. It's not going to wash out. Washable, crack resistant on fabric. I like I like that. I haven't tried it on fabric yet. And it, and it has 18 sheets with instructions on the inside. Let's take a look. So the sheets have a dotted grid. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that's good if you're trying to line something up. And then here are the general instructions. Printing, pressing, and peeling instructions. Just print, press, and peel. The best thing we can do with anything that's new is to read the instructions completely before you move forward. So I can't wait to try this on another project. Now, when you get something like this, you need inspiration, right? This has a couple of different things on the back to show you inspiration. Okay, I'm trying to get this back in, but it's not working. I'm gonna try to do that later. So these are my pieces, right? But we also need inspiration. So guess what? There's a book. <laughs> That's right, there's a book. There is a book called The Ultimate Guide to Transfer Artist Paper or TAP. I'll highlight that in the carousel. Hello, join me. Do you like to do crafts, DIY projects? What's your favorite? Let us know in the chat. Unmute and tell us what's your favorite crafting uh, project. Do you like to paint? Do you like to draw? Do you like to sew? Knit? What's your favorite craft project? We're talking about some fun and different crafting project ideas, DIY, that you can use very easily at home, right? With DIY, simple. We're talking about transfer artist paper. This is the first one. So this is a guide to that paper. So here's the paper. Here's the paper, right? I have 18 sheets that I can run through my printer or I can draw on, paint on, 
But now once I've done that, what do I do with it? This guide is supposed to help us with that. Explore 15 new projects for crafters, quilters, mixed media, and fine artists. So this covers a lot of different areas. Let's take a closer look. I'm gonna switch to the overhead camera. All right, so this is the ultimate guide to tap transfer artist paper. Explore 15 projects for crafters, quilters, mixed media artists, and fine artists. Use TAP to transfer images onto fabric, paper, wood, glass, even clay, and more. So many options. I always like to go to the table of contents for a quick idea of what's inside of a book. So they talk about, which is fantastic, TAP on paper, fabric, canvas, wood, and metal. So there's chapters on each of those different types of medium that you're gonna transfer the art to. And then they have a uh, tap on polymer clay. So lots of ideas on how to transfer art onto your specific medium. Which medium do you like? Let us know, unmute and join. Okay, let's see. They have tips. I love tips, tips, tips. Tips always make it easier to move forward and have success when we're trying something new. All right, lots of uh, pictures. They show results of using different techniques. So this is the section on canvas. Tap on wood. So each chapter is, is fairly lengthy. It gives you some tips and what to watch for, what you need to know and what you need to watch for. Okay, oh, Craft Text is one of my favorite paper products. If you haven't been to my lives, go look at my Amazon page. My influencer page is tools.livingwatercoulter.live. I have one full live session on Craft Text. Amazing product. Okay, so polymer clay. Wow. Now, if you're an artist and you want to transfer your art to wood, to clay, if you draw or paint, this is a great way to find another tool for your arsenal as an artist, another tool for your toolbox. So I can't wait to try this transfer paper in one of these 15 projects. Now I'm a quilter, so I probably will probably try it on fabric. What do you think? Is this going to be a fun project, DIY transferring art? Now, if you're not an artist, there's a ton of free art out there that you can get for your own personal use and, and just play. Have a good time. Tap artist paper. This is the ultimate guide for using this transfer paper that you can run through your printer, that you can paint on, that you can stamp. If you like stamps and you do greeting cards or other types of paper art, you could try this. All right, so that's one idea. Transfer artist paper. Let me move this over here. All right. So what is next? What's next? Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Do you like fabric and specifically fabric bowls? Have you heard of fabric bowls? I have two books tonight that I wanna share with you about making fabric bowls. They're both very unique books and the first one is called Fast, Fun, and Easy. I love anything that says fast, fun, and easy because we all live a busy life, right? But I also want to have some time for fun and creativity. I love to be creative. And so five fabulous new shapes to use and display. That's an inviting cover. I like this cover. 
Let's take a closer look. All right, here it is. Fast, fun, and easy, irresistible balls. Already I'm enjoying the beautiful photos. Table of contents, all the basics. Every book needs to have some help on materials, supplies, and techniques. Do's and don'ts, tips. I like that it has that. Now these are the different types of bowls. Pieced, double square, sunflower, fancy, embellished. And this is the uh, materials. Materials, basic supplies, easy and fast techniques, basic techniques. Wonderful. See, now the book says fast and easy on the front. And you think, well, does it really mean it's fast and easy or is it going to be hard? Because you look at these bowls, at least I do, and I think it looks a little bit harder than what they're saying. But when you go through the book, they highlight easy, fun, fast. They want to let you know that they're being true to the cover, to the title, that it is easy and that it is fast. And so these are the tips that will help it make it easier and faster and fun to make the bowls. So I like that. I like that a lot. Um, let's see. Very, look at these variations. Can you see those variations? Very, very, very interesting designs. I like that. Hello, join us. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, The Living Water Quilter. We're talking about DIY crafts. We're going to look at a couple different things that we can do to enjoy crafting. We just finished looking at TAP, which is a transfer artist paper, and now we're looking at how to make fast, fun, and easy bowls with fabric oof these are just so pretty i like that look at that especially this one here it's like a blooming flower okay i like that they have these step-by-step -step photos Yep, step-by-step -step photos, and they continue with this whole theme of fun, easy, and fast. And variations. Now, it looks like these patterns, this is the second time that we've seen variations. So, it must be a theme when it comes to the particular chapter. So, this is Sunflower Bowl. And then when we get toward the end, after finishing... They show you a whole page of variations on that pattern. So these are variations on the sunflower bowl. I like that because that means you're getting more inspiration. I like to have inspiration, especially when I'm trying something new. All right. Well, I don't know what you think, but I think this is a fun book. Something neat to try, something different. Are you looking for a gift for a special friend who loves fiber and sewing and crafting, who wants to do their own home decor items? These bowls are fun shapes for practical use and for display. Fun, fast, easy. I like that. Awesome. Okay, I promised you two books. The second book is called modern modern fabric art bowls let's take a look at that there you go modern fabric art bowls isn't that interesting I don't know if you can see that up close like my light okay maybe it's best that I go to the overhead camera Wow Gorgeous, just like that so much. Express yourself with quilt blocks, applique, embroidery, and more. 
again, this is another book that says, we're gonna take a crafting technique, but we're going to allow people who enjoy different crafts, those who like to quilt, which is me, quilt blocks, those who enjoy applique, which is handwork, and then those who like embroidery. And embroidery could be machine embroidery or hand embroidery. I love when they do that because it opens it up to different um, personalities. Same technique, but incorporate something that you like. Do you like quilting, embroidery, handwork, machine work? What do you like? Let us know in the chat. Let's take a look at the table of contents. This is another one that I can't wait to try because I love making quilt blocks. This is definitely embroidery. Look at that. Embroidery, this is a quilt block. Okay, table of contents. Of course, supplies, basic techniques, um, the outside layer, inside layer must be important because it's a full each of them are a full chapter uh, one cloth wonder triangles the nine patch star blocks and then a, a chapter on creating or finishing the bowl and variations they have one chapter on variations okay how fabric bowls are made I just think these are just gorgeous. I love this. Do you like fiber? Do you like fabric? Say hello in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know if you have any questions. Sewing pieces together. Fusing fabric to interfacing. There has to be interfacing in the supply list. They have additional basics, cotton fabric, nonstick ironing surface, Heavy interfacing, double-sided, fusible. It makes sense that that would be the case, that it's going to fuse on both sides for a bowl. Because you, heavy interfacing. Because you want it to be stiff. That's the only way it's going to sit up on the side, right? That it's going to um, have shape and form. Okay. The outside layer... Okay. Fantastic design um, diagrams on how to do the outside layer in the binding and the inside layer. Are you intrigued? Are you ready to get started? Hello, hello, I'm Geraldine Wilkins. We're looking at different DIY projects for crafters, and now we're looking at modern fabric bowls. Have you ever made a fabric bowl? I'm showcasing two books tonight about fabric bowls, and this one is about modern. It's one that's geared toward those who enjoy quilt blocks, applique, and embroidery. So you just pick whichever one you want to make a fabric bowl step-by-step -step diagrams. Okay, here's the chapter on variations. Look at that beautiful embroidery. Wow. Very nice. Have you ever thought about featuring your embroidery in a bowl? I haven't. And now there's some patterns in the back. Templates for applique. Here's the gallery. Awesome, beautiful. Some star blocks are included here in the gallery. All right, well, I think this is definitely a technique you might wanna try. If you enjoy fabric, embroidery, quilting, and you wanna feature those techniques in a small project like this, a DIY fabric bowl <clears throat> with some modern flair. This is the book. So there was this book on fabric bowls and then this one, Fast and Easy. So two different books, Fast and Easy and one with a modern touch, Fabric Art Bowls. 
DIY projects for home decor. Love these two ideas. So now I want to look at this tote behind me. You see that beautiful tote behind me? That is a um, quilt block project tote. You can use it for quilt blocks. It's large enough to carry a 12 inch by 12 inch or even bigger uh, quilt block and quilting supplies. So I want to show you in a um, overhead photo first. Let me find that for you. There it is. It has some unique and beautiful fabric. It also has some unique and beautiful quilting. If I do say so myself, I made it. And I love fabric. Do you like fabric? Let me know what fabric you like. This fabric is a Cafe Facets Ombre Leaves and Shot Cottons. I'll highlight the shot cotton. That's the gray background. Now that shot cotton has this, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. I have some here to show you, but this fabric, the shot cotton, it has a little glimmer to it. It almost has this iridescent magenta. Can you see that on camera? Maybe just a little bit. I hope you can see that. It's beautiful fabric. I love this shot cotton by um, the designer, Cafe Facet. Have you heard of him? Beautiful fabric. So he, this is one of his fabrics from his shot cotton line, highlighted in the carousel. Then he also designed this line called Ombre Leaves. I'm gonna highlight a couple of them in the carousel. I use these fabrics for this tote, this project tote. Aren't these gorgeous, these ombre leaves? And why is it called ombre? Ombre means it, there's a graduation from one color to the next. So you can see that, I'm gonna go to the host view again. You see how it goes from a dark pink to a light pink and then dark pink again. That's ombre. See that? Isn't that beautiful? I'll highlight that in the carousel. This is the Ombre Leaves by Cafe Facet. Beautiful fabric. I just love this. So this is one that's in the tote behind me right here. And then I use this one, this ombre for the star. This is the ombre for the star. I highlight that in the carousel, ombre leaves. Beautiful fabric. And then I also use this one. This is a blue ombre, blue. So there's several different colors in this ombre fabric line. Check it out in the carousel. There's several that I've highlighted. You can take a look and find which one that you like. Let's look at it from the overhead cam. Maybe that will help too so you can see how beautiful this fabric is. Here's the purple and gray that I used in the star in the tote. This one is purple ombre. This is a small strip. This is what's remaining after I made the tote. This is the purple. And here is this beautiful pink, pink to red or burgundy. I'm not sure what color you'd call that, but the main color is pink, right? Isn't that pretty? What's your favorite color? Let us know. Say hello in the chat. Now this is the shot cotton. This is the shot cotton. I don't know if you can see that iridescence that I was talking about. It has like this undertone of burgundy in the fabric. Can you see that? It's just beautiful fabric. Beautiful fabric. So I bet you want to see a close-up of that tote. 
But before we do that, let me go back to uh, the tote overhead photo. So there it is. You can see that beautiful stitching on it. Oops, there we go. And that's what it looks like on the inside. You're able to carry your quilting supplies in it and your cutting and other materials that you would use on the go. On the go. Okay. Let's take a look. Here it is. This is the Cafe Facet fabric. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love how that, this is the purple ombre in the back. This is the pink ombre fabric. And then it's the star on both sides. Just gorgeous. I love the way that turned out. Okay, let's look at the star. Whoops, I want this one instead. Let's look at this. So the star was made pieced together with the gray ombre, right? The gray ombre fabric. And I like to use certain tools for that. And one is one of my favorite rulers, which I'll highlight in the carousel, is this Creative Grids quick trim ruler. It's 12 and a half inches, 12 and a half inches by three and a half. It's ideal for almost all of my cutting because I can cut yardage with this. I can cut the strips I need for the binding. And so the binding is this part of the fabric. This is the binding. After the tote was made, it had to be bound. And this is the blue ombre. I use this for binding. I use it for cutting yardage. It's ideal. And then I use, of course, a rotary cutter. And I love the 45 millimeter. The 45 millimeter, I'll highlight that in the carousel. This is ideal. Let me show you in the overhead camera. Get some fabric here. So this is 40 inches. It's folded in half, 40 inches. When we get our fabric, the width is 40 inches, right? So now this is folded in half and it's 20 inches. I fold it in half again and that's how I cut yardage. So now this is folded. It has four layers, four layers. And now I can cut it with this ruler. So I'll show you that again. So here is one layer right here, second layer, and then this is folded in half. Remember, this is folded in half. So this is two layers. And I can easily cut this with this ruler. I love this. You see how this is, now we get a yard, right? 36 inches is the yard, but the uh, width of the fabric is usually 44 to 40 inches, 40 inches to 44. So I folded it in half, right? Then I folded it in half again. And it's just, this ruler is just the right length for cutting strips of fabric to make the quilt block. And I used this 45 millimeter Olaf rotary cutter which is highlighted. I'll highlight the ruler again for you. So now I can just line up the bottom of the ruler. There's a line there, but the edge of the, the fabric on the fold, that's gonna help me get a straight cut. And there's a safety mechanism on here. When you're not cutting, you always want to push that this lever to close off Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Caleb. 
Thank you. Great crafts. Oh, you're so kind. When you're ready to cut, then you pull this down and the blade now is visible. And you always want to keep your fingers far from the cutting area. You would apply a little bit of pressure down and down with pressure against the ruler to cut your fabric. It's just that easy. Just like that. Favorite cutting tools. The, the Olaf 45 millimeter rotary cutter. And this is my favorite ruler. It's the Creative Grids 12 and a half by three and a half ruler. It's perfect for every type of cutting and quilting. I don't know if you noticed these 45 degree lines. I use these lines when I'm cutting my binding. And remember the binding is this edge of the project bag. I use two two inch strips for most of my binding. For this one, I use a little bit bigger, two and three quarters. Perfect for cutting binding, this ruler. Okay, so I want to share that with you and Let's look at presents are made in the North Pole. Yes, I need to be careful with the rotary cutter. <laughs> well, thank you for joining. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to look at a little bit more here on this bag. And by the way, this bag is very personal to me. It's called Aunt Baby's Bag. It's named after my mother, and yesterday would have been her 87th birthday. I designed this bag. She loved bags, and it's my way of remembering my mom. Yeah, so Aunt Baby's Bag. But we're talking about this beautiful cafe facet fabric. Isn't it awesome? I just love it. I'll highlight it again for you in the carousel. This gray is the shot cotton by cafe facet and i'll highlight that yeah thank you for saying that happy birthday thanks caleb i really appreciate that really appreciate that but i want to share with you again so i cut the fabric for the star from the ombre gray now remember this ombre fabric it's graduated from light to dark so when I cut the pieces, I wanted to match up the prints the best way I could. So it looked close enough to, to matching. It wouldn't match perfectly, and that's okay. But I tried my best to make it look, you know, close enough like a continuous star. So I think that worked out really good. Um, now... What do we want to talk about now? We want to talk about we want to talk about this texture that you see on here, this quilting that I did. Now I love quilting. And what is quilting? When we make a star and sew it together, that's called piecing. When we quilt, that's when we take three layers, three layers. The top, which is the star, the cotton that's in the middle, and then for this, this purple ombre, this is the back, backing fabric. So those three layers have to be sewn together and that's called quilting. So I used a special, special tool for that. And I wanna show you what that looks like. Here's another example of that same tool being used on a different quilt block, different quilt block, but it's called acrylic rulers acrylic rulers have you heard of acrylic rulers have you heard of acrylic rulers if not i'm going to show you what that looks like as i clean off my desk here okay where are they oh here they are let me get them well, before I do, let me show you this in person. I think you need to see this in person, post view. All right, so this is the star with that same type of quilting. 
Can you see that texture on there? That's called the Baptist fan. Baptist fan quilting. You want to make a bag for your mom? Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, it would have been nice to make one for my mom. I've made many things for my mom. I think that's one of the things that I love about DIY. You know, whether it's crafting, woodworking, or any other DIY, we make stuff not just for ourselves, we make it for others, right? So, um, let me go back to... So that's what it looks like in a photo. But here is the stitching process. I'm using these special rulers. They're, they're acrylic rulers with my sewing machine. And I'm gonna highlight this ruler set in the carousel. Oh, by the way, you know what I forgot to mention? I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit before I get to this because I don't want you to not, I don't want you to miss out on do you notice that green mat and even the yellow mat that I was cutting on? Those are self-healing mats specifically for cutting fabric. You don't want to use this rotary cutter that you see in the photo on a table, a wood table. You need a cutting mat. And so I'm going to highlight that in the carousel. I just highlighted that. So if you're new to crafting and cutting fabric with a rotary cutter, please make sure you use a cutting mat. And so I like all off, which I just highlighted. And I also like um, Fiskars. Fiskars. So I'll, I'll highlight that. The yellow one that you saw when I was cutting the fabric, that was the Fiskars mat. And they come in different sizes. So here is the large, large, large cutting mat that I use. Um, this is the Olaf cutting mat. It's quite large, 36 inches by uh, 24 inches, 36 by 24 inches. And you can use both sides. So if you don't need the lines, you can use the plain side. You can use the plain side. Okay? So I want to make sure that I mention that. You must use a cutting mat. And then this is the Fiskars. This is the Fiskars 24 by 18 inches. So this one's a little bit smaller. They come in various sizes. You get the size that fits your space. And then I like some that ro that rotate, that make it easier for cutting. It just all varies. All right, so let's go back to the ruler. Sorry for that little diversion, but I didn't want to forget. I didn't want to forget that you need that when you're cutting fabric, rotary cutter, cutting mat, and a good ruler. Okay. Um, let's see, where were we now? We were talking about the ruler quilting on this project, those beautiful Baptist fan curves. How do you stitch that? And I was showing you that I'm doing this on a home machine. This is not something that is complicated. You just have to learn how to do it. And I used what are called Westerly Design Mini Baptist Fan Acrylic Rulers. Mini Baptist Fan Acrylic Rulers. And you can see from this photo that I'm using a special foot and it's called a ruler foot. Let me highlight in the carousel the Westerly Design Mini Baptist Fan Set that's highlighted in the carousel. And then you need a ruler foot. And you need a ruler foot, which is a special foot. I'll show you that. This is a special foot. Overhead camera is going to be better for this one. This foot has a high collar. You see how it's it, it's a little tall. That's what allows you to put this against the acrylic ruler. And I'll show that to you. But this is the ruler foot. Okay. 
Let's do that. Let me bring in those rulers. I think you want to see those. I've talked enough about them. I think it's time to see them. Okay. Here they are. Okay. So, again, this is the Westerly Design Mini Baptist Fan Set. Mini Baptist Fan Set. And it's a set of four. Do you notice these curves? These are the curves that you saw inside the quilting. And you need all four to make various types of designs. So when you're making, here's the ruler foot. Remember I talked about you need this ruler foot. This is the Wesley Design ruler foot. It's highlighted in the carousel. And you might notice that there's these little patches of white. That's actually stable tape. Stable tape. This is stable tape. This allows the template to grip the fabric as you're sewing. If you don't have that, the acrylic template just slides. See how easily it slides? The stable tape is right here on the top. When I turn this over, it's harder for it to move. It grips the fabric and you need it to do that. Then you're going to have this foot on your machine right and you're going to go around the edge of the template to stitch each curve maybe it might be easier to see with the larger one so remember that the curves start small and they get bigger and bigger and bigger so that's why you need four templates so I'm going to bring the foot in I'll do it this way so you can see better. You're going to bring the foot in and you're going to stitch along the outside edge, scoot over and stitch along the inside edge. Once you do that, you switch this out because this is the larger curve, right? These two are the larger curves. Now you need smaller curves. And so then you bring in the next size. That's why there are four templates. You bring in the next size and then you stitch. Okay. Hello and welcome. Welcome, I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter, and we are talking about Westerly Design Rulers. We're basically talking about DIY crafts, what you can do on your own. And we've talked about fabric bowls, we've talked about tote bags, and this tote bag that I made, made this tote bag, and it's been quilted with this acrylic ruler. I use these acrylic rulers, the ba Baptist Fan Mini Set by Westerly Design, to quilt this beautiful curved stitching that you see on this tote. And the fabric featured is Cafe, Fabri Cafe Facets Ombre Fabric. I'll highlight Cafe Fabric again in the carousel. This is some of the beautiful fabric. It's the Ombre Leaves. Ombre Leaves. Beautiful collection. And this beautiful gray is Shot Cotton. It has this undertone of, of burgundy which matches this ombre burgundy and pink that you see here. It's beautiful. I just highlighted the Cafe Facets shot cottons in the carousel. Beautiful. But this quilting was done with the Westerly Design Ruler. So we were just going over that. And I want to show you some more uh, photos. Let me call that up for you number two so there it is in action there's a photo of when I quilted this one using the same rulers using the same rulers okay using the same rulers 
and you use them one at a time and you have the option you can make the spacing between each curve whatever distance you want if you only want to make one big curve and then move to the next one you can or you can do multiple like i did you see i did one two three four different curves so i had to switch out the templates so there's the smaller template from the set now you see the larger template i'm using a home machine and the machine is a Janome, a Janome. I have owned Janome's most of my sewing career. I started sewing and quilting in 2006. And I started with a small machine and then when I graduated up to a larger machine, it was Janome 6500. And then I went to um, another Janome and then this one this is another Janome that's like in the memory craft line so Janome has a memory craft line and they come with all the feet that you need they're fantastic machines i can't say enough about Janome machines i love them so let me go back to the overhead camera so again this is the westerly design mini baptist fan set four acrylic templates this is the large one you can make curves or arches one and a half one and three quarters with this one. Oh, this is the largest one this one is two inches and then two and a quarter two and a quarter two inches then this size this size and then this is the smaller one this smaller one i don't know if you notice you can make a very very small arc with it and these little white patches are the staple tape. You need the staple tape. When you get this foot, this is the Wesley Design ruler foot. Remember, you need a ruler foot to use these templates. You can get the starter set. I'm gonna highlight that in the carousel. That's the starter set. If you get the starter set and you're new to acrylic ruling, quilting, you get this 12 inch arc, <clears throat> stable tape, and the ruler foot to start off with. You may have noticed that there are some straight lines, straight lines in this quilting. These straight lines were done with this 12 inch arc. Straight line quilting with this 12 inch arc and the ruler foot. So I used both, I used both. Let me put this here under the camera so that you can see. Now, of course you can stitch those one right after another with a regular walking foot. The benefit of using this acrylic ruler, you notice those lines on there? These are a half inch distance and I can easily stitch these lines because the ruler foot is a half inch in diameter and it quilts a quarter inch away from the edge of the acrylic template. This acrylic template or ruler when I put the foot next to it and I stitch, I'm stitching a quarter inch away. Then I move the template over and then I stitch the next one. I don't have to measure. I use the lines on the ruler or the edge of the ruler. And then I just keep going. I don't have to mark to quilt. It does all the work for me. I love ruler quilting. Hello, hello, I'm so glad you're here. This is Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter. Say hello in the chat. Are you ruler quilting? Do you quilt your own projects? I love ruler quilting. It makes it fun, fast, and easy, but also creative. You get these fun, creative designs with rulers. I hope you enjoyed that part of this segment on DYI projects. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. So anyway, we're talking about Sky Dyes, a visual guide to fabric painting. 
Have you painted fabric? This was the first time I tried it. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. And I'm gonna show you some of the things that I have tried with this book. But let's take a close look first. Sky Dyes, a visual guide to fabric dyeing. Beautiful. I always like to look at the table of contents. Getting started, the sky, beneath the sky, beyond the sky, so everything in between. That sounds neat. I like that idea. Introduction. Isn't that beautiful? So dyeing your own fabric for your personal projects, whether it's a quilt, a bag, a table runner, an art quilt. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Kay. Welcome. I'm so glad. Thank you for following. Thank you. We have fun here. We are going to have fun talking about all kinds of projects. Let me know what you're interested in. What do you like? Do you like quilting, sewing? What kind of crafting do you do? All right. They tell you what paint to get for the, for the dyeing, preparation, general instructions, all the particulars, applicators, and supplies. That's one of the things that when I took this class, she had this assortment of applicators and techniques for me to try that would give different results. And it just made it fun. And it's almost like there were no rules. And so that made it easy too. So I, it, it was not stressful, it wasn't stressful. And gloves for sure. And I did try this technique. Okay, maybe the suspense should be over and I should show you what I've done, what I did. I'm gonna bring those out. Okay, here they are. We're going to look at these that I did. And I think the overhead camera is going to be better because you're not going to be able to really see the colors very well. So let's go back. So we're going to go in order. This is the first one I did, which is very similar to what you see here in the book. I used blue and I just took some because she the teacher that was showing me how to do this, she suggested just to practice the technique, not necessarily worry about the result, but just practice the technique. So we just used a bed sheet, an old, worn, white bed sheet. And I just practiced the technique. So that was fun. That was interesting. One type of application. I, I don't remember which one I used with it, whether it was a sponge or um another kind of applicator then this came next so you can see there's a little bit more saturation right isn't that fun and now it's two-sided but you're going to see how the sides can be a little bit different because you can use paints that permeate the fabric and paints that just sit on the surface so you get different techniques Okay, so this one is definitely a different applicator. See how blotchy it is? Blotchy. It's a little blotchy compared to this one. This looks like I almost did some strokes. Some strokes. All right? But very different techniques. This one, I think, resembles more of a sky with clouds. Maybe. I don't know, maybe the application would be different because then these blotches could be clouds, right? <laughs> Have you tried painting with fabric, painting on fabric? All right, look at this one. This one is really saturated. So this is one side. This is the one that I told you about, well, one of them, where I used fabric uh, paint that saturated the colors and then I used another technique. Of course, the teacher, she taught me how to do this. I used a different paint. Look at that. Look at those little glimmers. It's a shimmery paint that does not 
saturate. Instead, it sits on top of the fabric. And I couldn't believe that on my first try, using this book, the techniques in this book, Sky Dyes, that I did this. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. And it's so gorgeous. Now, I've saved these. I'm not sure how I'm going to use them in a project. Eventually, I will. But I just love that. So that's nice. Now, so all of those were done with one color, except for this one with a little bit of some glimmery silver paint on top. Look at this one. I added a second color. And I did some folding techniques so that before it dried, it was folded or crumpled so that when it dried, it pushed ink into the crevices and created this dimension. This is flat. Now, I need to show you a photo of when they were drying. Would you like to see that? Let me show that to you. Okay, where is that now? Okay, here we go. This, oh, wrong one. This is the one I want to show you. Okay, so there is the other side of the one I was just showing you where I used two colors. So that's the second side. That side, same piece of fabric, but that side too. You can see it's the same one, right? It's only because I put some additional uh, paint on it that didn't saturate. So let me show you. That's what it looks like on one side after it's been dried. Two colors, a green and a blue. And before it dried, I crinkled it up so that it would create those crevices and it dried in that crinkle state. Again, techniques in the book. Okay, let me go back to the overhead cam because I want to show you this other side. So this is the side with the two colors and it was crinkled while it dried. Now look, I added that same silver iridescent paint that didn't saturate but created. Now I would look at these as mistakes, but she said, no, those aren't mistakes. It's just a different look. So I have some shimmering of that silver paint just coming through on one side of the dye. This is the other side. Isn't that fascinating? I just love this. So this is Sky Dyes. Sky Dyes. I just highlighted in the carousel. Sky Dyes. A visual guide to fabric painting. Now, again, this was just play. And look at the results that I got my first time. Just beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to show you another one. This is another technique that's in the book. Again, this is the same fabric sheet, same fabric sheet, uh, which is a bed sheet. Look at this one. Now, this one, again, is two colors, green and blue. Green and blue. Two sides with two different looks. Two different looks, right? Can you see this little, this texture here, this modeling that you see here, that texture. See that texture? What about this side? You can see these little dots. These dots. That is from salt. That while it dries, you put salt on it and it interacts with the, the paint and it creates that texture. Let's take a look. There's a photo of the salt on top of it as the fabric is drying. And it created that beautiful 
texture that you see across here. It adds just this dimension to it. It's just so fascinating. Hello and welcome. I'm Geraldine Wilkins. Unmute and join the conversation. Have you dyed fabric before? Have you tried fabric dyeing? This was my first time trying fabric dyeing and it's so much fun. So much fun. It's highlighted in the carousel and it's easy. It's so easy with this book, Sky Dyes. Sky Dyes. Love this. So much fun. So I played around a lot with the blue. Now I'm going to hide this photo and I want you to look and this one, look at the background. Do you notice that the background that I'm using for this live is the fabric that I dyed? It's this fabric. Yes, it's this fabric. It's this fabric. <laughs> I just took a photograph of it and I imported it into my computer. Can you see the texture of the fabric on the screen? I don't know if you can or not, but it's that's what I used. Okay, so that was the blue. Now let's look at another color. I decided to go with some brown. And I don't know if this is really gonna show up well on camera, but again, I took that same uh, iridescent, that silver paint, and I diluted the paint so that it'd be a wash. So it could be just a speckle of shimmery light across the fabric. And I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but that's what it is. This side, you don't really see it. It's a very warm yellow to warm color. But on this side, it shimmers, it shimmers. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I will go to, um, let's see, this camera. There it is in a photograph. Can you see that shimmer? I don't know if you can see that shimmer on that, but it was just fun to play with another color, more washing, more of a, um, almost like a desert gray or a beach gray not gray, but brown, brownish yellow, beach sand or desert sand kind of color with just a little bit of shimmer. Have you ever been on the beach and you just see the light go across the sand and you can see just little speckles of glimmering shells or something? I just think it's so pretty, so pretty. I don't know if you can see it in the photo. Um, let me show you another one. That one again is the drying process. And I don't know if I put that in. I meant to put the drying process in. Maybe I forgot to do that. I think I did. But basically, there are a number of ways in which you can create depth in the fabric that you're dyeing. You can allow it to lay flat and then you get this one dimensional uh, flavor to it, like you saw here. You really don't see much dimension in that. You see the different and graduated colors, but when it, while it's still wet and you crinkle it or fold it, the, the paint or the dyes start to move and uh, start to gather in one area, like in a crease. And so as a result, you get what looks like when it dries that it's still folded. And that's what you see here in the photo. And that's this one here. It is flat. This has been ironed, but you still see those creases. Is that fascinating? I just love that. Let me go to the overhead camera. Maybe that will help a little bit. See this area here? It looks like it's folded, but it's not. It was just folded while it dried. Now it's perfectly flat. And so that's why you get these light and dark areas. It just creates this amazing texture. 
So again, and then here's the other side. You can see that this is the application side where I actually put the paint. It did go through to the other side, but it's not as strong in terms of the color because you can see this is where it was folded quite a bit. Look at that side compared to this side. Because this is where the ink, the dye was um, put on top. Okay, so I thought that that, that was pretty fascinating. Sky dyes. I learned all these techniques of applying and crinkling and different paints and diluting the paint and using different applicators all from this book sky dyes and she shows you photos of different application techniques and the results that you can get blending colors is that pretty this is the one here's the here it is here it is you see how she's crinkled the fabric? She's showing you the technique. It's flat here, and now she's bunched it up for the drying process. Bunching it up. And here it's partially dried, and this is what happens after it's dried. Beautiful. Beautiful technique. I love the technique. Here it is. You can have so much fun with this. Look at those blues. And then sun prints. Do you remember the one with the speckles and the little star on it? Let me see if I can find it. So this one here with the speckles with the speckles. Basically, I took the paintbrush and then just did that. And it just speckled on top of the fabric. But this one little star, can you see that? I don't know if you can. That one star, that was a result of putting a, a star on top of this while it dried. A small little star on top and so what happened is the paint moved away from the star to create this star in white or a lighter shade of blue and so she also talks about how you can put different objects on top of what you've painted that will create different patterns like this one called sun prints Great book. Great book. Are you inspired? Are you ready to do some fabric painting? I just love this. You know, some of us might struggle a little bit with color choices and how we use it, but you can do it. Just get some help. Use a book like this if you want to try fabric painting. She makes it easy to get started with very easy techniques and easy tools. Okay, so what is next? Next, we're gonna look at the color wheel. Foolproof color workbook. Do you struggle with selecting colors for your projects, whether you're a painter, you uh, do digital art, or you do uh, fabric type of things, embroidery, quilts? Sometimes we just need a little extra help. Foolproof. A foolproof color workbook. Learn, practice, and master a hands-on journey through the color wheel. The color wheel. So let's take a look at that. I'll highlight this in the carousel. It's highlighted. And I know that sometimes I need a little extra help when selecting colors. So table of contents says hues, primary colors, secondary colors, saturation so uh, area on hue saturation temperature warm colors and cool colors intensity and transparency and then color relationships this seems like this is a university level book it's covering everything and then color combinations direct complement split complement 
double compliment, double, double compliment. I didn't know there were so many areas in color. Okay, good diagrams, always like that. Saturation, value, extra color wheels, creating your own. Here is a grayscale chart for you to color. I suggest coloring either the grayscale or the hues first, then adding the other. So this is not only a book about the color wheel, but there are practical applications, projects, exercises that you can do. Experiment with color temperature. So this is all the same pattern, but colored in different ways. And now you have an example here where you can do it yourself. I like that. Pretty neat. Oh, you have several that you can do. This is a great book. If you really want to learn color. Transparency. That's pretty popular in modern quilting is to do transparency quilts. So here are some examples. Opaque transparency. And then... Again, another page to do your own. Wow, blended transparency. Fantastic. Wow, neutrals and color relationship. If you're not inspired by this, this is just amazing. I love that they have in each section the information, the how-to, and then the practice, the practical. Now do it yourself. Not only read the information and learn it, now can you do it? And here is a page, a coloring page, for you to do it yourself. Fantastic. Neat. And they give examples, so that's good too. So here's an example, and now you're going to do it yourself. I love that. Hello, this is Geraldine Wilkins. We are talking about DIY projects, gift ideas, and craft books for those who love to make projects, learn interesting techniques. And with every craft and DIY project, we have to think about color choices. And I thought it would only be perfect to talk about a workbook on color. A lot of us struggle with what color to get. Now, earlier I was talking about Cafe Fabric, um, Cafe Facets Fabric, the ombre leaves. You can buy now fabrics that are a collection. So they do all the color work for you. But what if you have just a whole bunch of solid colors, like a rainbow of colors, how do you know how to put them together? Another thing that you can use is called a color wheel. Color wheel. Do you have a color wheel? I just highlighted this in the carousel. This is a mini color wheel. It's a take along. That's what it's called. Take along mini color wheel. 12 numbered colors with tints, tones, and shades. Five color plans. It says, let's go to the overhead camera. Perfect color every time travel size. The pocket book size color wheel reference tool is perfect for shopping, classes, retreats, and more. Have you ever been to the store and you're trying to figure out what color am I going to get to finish that project? You know what kind of fabric you want, but you haven't decided on the color and you just need some help, some inspiration to make sure that they either complement or they um, blend together nicely, having a pocket-sized color wheel would help. Let's see, let's open this up. Let's open this up. Okay, I don't wanna tear the, let's see if I can get this open without Okay, there we go. 
Oh, using your takeaway mini color wheel. It's in this little pocket here, which is neat. Look at that. I like that. Interesting. Aqua green, green, yellow, green, yellow. And so it says here, monochromatic plan, complementary plan, analogous plan, and then split comp complementary plan. So this color wheel has those examples for you based on each of the colors on the wheel. So that's what the diagrams represent. So these diagrams represent the various plans monochromatic, complementary, analogous, split complementary, and triadic color plan. This is handy to have at a quilt retreat, at a quilt shop, at a fabric store, at a paint shop if you're a painter. This is fantastic. I like this, especially it has this little pocket. Neat, love this, fantastic. So, are you inspired? Are you ready to get started with color? Do you need help with color? Will this pocket color wheel help you when you need to go look to find the right paint color for your next craft project? You know, whether it's yarn or fabric or paint or ink for stamping. Do you make greeting cards and you want to find the right ink? Having a color wheel like this would be very handy, especially when we have a specific plan, when we know we want to go complementary or we know we want to go monochromatic. Fantastic. So this is the monochromatic side. And then the other plans are on this side. So the complementary, the analogous, the split complementary, and the triadic color plans are on the opposite side. Love this, love this, love this. Hello, I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Filter, and this is Quilt Conversations Live. We're talking about projects, DIY projects, and craft books. What do you like to do? Are you a crafter? Do you like to stitch, crochet, quilt? How about paper? Do you work with paper? What about felt? That's the next book we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about felt. Now, I haven't personally tried felt, but I have an interest in felt. I used felt in a quilting project for a banner, for a banner, but I haven't used it to make flowers. Felt flowers. The book is called Felt Flower Workshop, a modern guide to crafting gorgeous plants and flowers from fabric, from felt. Let's take a closer look. Overhead cam. Felt flower workshop. Let's see, what did the back have? It is fresh or is it felt? Meaning, is, does it look that good that you can't tell the difference between whether it's real or felt? Interesting. This is a beautiful cover. This is something I'd like to try. Beautiful for home decor and for all kinds of things. Let's see. Table of Contents has flowers and uh, leaf tutorials. All kinds of plants. Succulents, sunflowers, peonies. Oh, I love peonies. What's your favorite flower? Let us know. Unmute and join us in the chat. Say hello. What is your favorite flower? Peonies are beautiful. I love peonies. Ferns, I like those too. And then there's projects at the end. So they show you how to make... Oh, isn't that bouquet gorgeous? It does look real. It does look real. Okay. Wow. Beautiful headband of flowers. All right, so this is the important part, getting started. Tools and materials. 
and cutting multiple felt pieces. So that's basic techniques. How to make an easy. Anything that starts with the word easy, I love. And so an easy rolled rose. How to make a rose. Rolled mum, an open flower, wrapping a stem, and then here are the tutorials for a flower and leaf, leaf and flower tutorial. Look at that, amazing. Are you ready to try something new? What's your plan for 2020? Do you have a plan or goal to try a different technique or a new technique? Let me highlight this in the carousel. We are talking about felt flower. Felt flower workshop, a modern guide to crafting gorgeous plants, flowers from fabric. I love this, love this. Beautiful, a garden rose. Very nice, big photos, detailed photos, step-by-step. -step. I always like step-by-step -step photos. And then the steps are in words as well for the peony. They have steps one all the way down to step 10. And then you have the photos to match. So tons of flowers, an air terrarium. Look at this potted fern. Is that gorgeous? So nice. People are so creative. There are so many different ways that we can express our creativity. And in this one, they're using felt. Gorgeous. Very, very nice. And then there are templates in the back. So you don't have to worry about creating the shape for the leaf or the flower they, or the stem or different parts of a flower. Like this one is for succulents. And so these are the different sizes. Love that. More leaves and uh, for the uh, various flowers and arrangements that you can make. I like that too, very nice. The images and photography in here is fantastic. All right, another idea for DIY projects. Are you looking for something as a gift idea for a friend who loves to work with their hands, who love DIY projects? Felt flowers is maybe something new, maybe something they wanna try. It's a workshop. A guide to making leaves and flowers, and several of them said easy. I like a book when it says easy. The last book for tonight, Pretty Punch Needle. Punch Needle. I did this years ago as a, as a young girl. My mom started us with crafting, and one was using um, a hook to do um, rug hooks. And this is very similar to that rug hooks let's do an overhead cam so pretty punch modern projects creative techniques and easy there goes that word again easy instructions for getting started fiber art this evening has been about fiber art we talked about fabric we talked about felt cotton fabric for the tote bag dyeing fabric and now we're talking about punch needle. Beautiful texture. These those um, hook rugs that we used to make, similar to this, where it would be just this beautiful thick texture. Hook rugs, but now they are pillows, they're wall art, all kinds of ways to now use. Oh, table of contents. You use that same technique. So getting started, basic uh, techniques always need best 
techniques, getting started, and tools. Always need that in a book. And then projects. Once you learn a technique, you need to apply it. You need to practice. And so they have projects. Geometric wall art, a lot of wall art projects, a trivet with a twist, a wall hanging, sculpted wall art, and a cushion, and other projects. Let's take a look here. Okay, getting started. Punch needles and other rug making tools. See, it's very similar to what we used to do. And I think when I was doing it, it was by number. By number, we used a pattern that had numbers for each of the colors. So it was, it was an easy project to, to do when I was a kid. We would do these as summer projects. My mom would take us out of the city. We would be in the country in upstate New York and no TV. And we had radio which sometimes worked, sometimes didn't. But she focused on us doing projects with our hands, learning different things. So this book has the tools that you need for rug making and needle punch, the fabrics that you need, what kind of yarn to get, frames and hoops, and then here's the basic techniques basic techniques okay framing all right hoops troubleshooting I love something that has troubleshooting because almost every time we start something new we're gonna run into some kind of difficulty or challenge and when an author includes that they know that you're gonna come across these challenges and so they prepare that and I like that this book includes that okay more basic techniques some good diagrams about needle punch your first project neat fun texture ideas I like the first project idea that's something that's small to just to get you started. Hello and welcome. So glad you're here. We're talking about DIY projects for crafters and in particular we're looking at books. We're looking at different books that you might want to get for yourself or for a friend and this is the last one for tonight. Let me highlight that in the carousel. It's called Pretty Punch Needle. You're going to use yarn and needles to create beautiful wall art, pillows, and so much more. Very, very pretty. And it has a modern flair to it. Look at this one. Lots of texture in that. Lots of texture. I like the diagrams, this progression. This reminds me of a quilt block pattern half square triangles and squares. Very nice. And then something that's small for a child, teenager, someone that wants to do, yep, kids, happy flower. This is a project for kids. There you go, kids. Neat project. All right, so what are you gonna try? Are you excited to try something new in crafting? 